What is up makers, my name is Jack Daly and welcome to Design More. In this episode we are going to be talking about flexography, the rival of gravia, offset lithography and all the other printing processes. So today we're going to be talking about the process, advantages, disadvantages, um, what flexography can actually print on and all that good stuff. So let's get started. So let's get started on the process. So first things first, how many cylinders are used in flexography? Well there is a total of four cylinders used, one obviously an impression plate, one is called a fountain plate and then the other two are just used obviously, one's for the printing plate and one's used similar to offset to obviously you know bring the ink onto it. Okay so we're going to talk about the fountain um, cylinder first and how the ink is deposited onto the printing plate is something we haven't really talked about on this channel before because it actually works. Uh, there is um, a little box or if you want to call it that where, an, where ink is then poured into in which or ink tray whatever you want to call it in which there is then the fountain cylinder which is then submerged in ink and that's what picks up the ink so now that we've got one cylinder here submerged in ink it then takes it to another cylinder which then has a doctor's blade in now what a doctor's blade is is basically there's a cylinder here and then a doctor's blade is here and you can set it to different um, dimensions here to show you how much ink you want to deposit on that final um, cylinder so if you want really thick ink you would obviously move the doctor's blade quite far away so then all of that ink is passed and so you get like a lot of ink the doctor's blade will stop that other ink from getting on there obviously you know you obviously want a thin coat so you would have the doctor's blade quite uh, close to it and then you get ink build up here but then you get that thin layer around that cylinder Okay, so now then, this is then deposited onto the final roller, apart from the impression roller, roller obviously, with the printing plate on it. Um, and the way this works is that it has an etched printing plate, so the, so the parts that are raised then get covered by ink. This then goes round onto the paper with an impression roller um, to really make sure that the ink is absorbed onto the material and we'll talk about materials later but a thing to note here is that flexography is can only be used web fed feeding and we'll go over what that means in another episode but for now what web fed means just a rough outline of what web fed means it means one continuous sheet of paper not cut paper Okay, so now that we've talked about the process, let's talk about some of the materials it can flexography can print on. So, some of the materials that flexography can print on are non-absorbent and absorbent materials. This is because um, of the way it's printed on a raised surface and it's forced on. That's why flexography is used um, for printing on chocolate wrappers, you know, shiny surfaces. Um, it can be printed on a, a, like paper and everything, but it's mostly used for like plastic bags and stuff like that. So next we're going to talk about some of the advantages of using flexography when printing. And there's quite a long uh, list. So first things first, the quality, it can print high-end graphics. and. Um, secondly, because it's got that fountain cylinder and it's already submerged in ink, its, it's speed is rapid and it's really fast. Also, it's due to its rapid speed, it's also cost effective and can print on absolutely any material. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some of the disadvantages of using flexography um, in the printing process. So first things first, as stated before, it can only be web fed, which is quite limiting in what it can print. Um, setup cost is also a lot due to the rollers, the amount of rollers used, um, the material is actually ceramic and also the potential ink wasted. Obviously we know that it's in an ink tray, what if that ink gets contaminated, the whole 
the whole tray's got to go. Other disadvantage is, is that any changes that are made are really time consuming to change. It's a bit of, of, of an overview. Um, the process we talked about, obviously fountain cylinder, four cylinders, you really got to remember that it's web fed. Um, some materials you got to remember that it can be printed on any material, but mostly used for chocolate wrappers um, and bags. And then you've got to remember that uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages can only be web fed, cost affected, rapid speed, um, and all that good stuff. So, I hope you enjoyed this video um, on design more. Um, where we talked about flexography, go check out the playlist called Reaper Graphics Explained where we talk about the process colours, offset lithography um, and where this video will be and obviously wait, subscribe for new videos and leave a like and I would love it if you guys could comment some questions you have so we can do a Q&A. Okay, so go check out my Instagram as well for like daily uploads or behind the scenes or whatever. Um, I'll leave that in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Any questions, of, as I said before, leave in the comments. Thank you for watching. This has been Design More.